As promised, joining us now is Jeannie Collin Keyes. She is an artist in Manassas, Virginia, and she's actually a very dear friend of mine. So welcome to the show, Jeannie. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. So tell me, how did you get started? Um, I was fortunate in becoming a uh, vendor for Nordstrom, mm -hmm. and I started in one store, and it uh, eventually ended up to be a national venue. And I sold commercially with them for about 13 years. Wow. And the media was watercolor, which uh, I'm not doing anymore. <laughs> but uh, it, was, uh, it was quite successful. They had, um, I was pretty much in 10% of sales um, throughout the years. Um, and I went from store to store, did personal appearances. And it, it was mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Met a lot of nice people. Now, so. I've seen your website, and I understand some celebrities have some of your prints, like Oprah. Uh, well, yes, yeah, she. But that was a long time ago. She did. She did purchase one, and well, actually three, and um, that was sort of like it catapulted me into another <laughs> sphere because uh, of the notoriety of someone, sure. you know. Uh, but uh, I don't know that that always affected everything that I sold, you know. But. Mm -hmm. That sure helped. <laughs> um, before that contract, I mean, that's a huge contract to start working with Nordstrom's and start yes. you know, providing paint for them. But before that, well, I was a I was a stay at home mom. I had two children, but I oh. always painted. My whole uh -huh. life, I always painted. I kind of had a sense that something was there was a reason for it, but I didn't uh, know what. And uh -huh. you know, it's life's a mystery. And sure. these, the, when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing things fall in place if you pay attention and mm -hmm. uh, this Nordstrom situation came up uh, totally out of none of my doing. So you weren't out there marketing I trying to get not, jobs, you were just kind of... No, I just was through a friend who kind of like this program who I had met and liked my work and happened to be at the place at the right time and gave wow. them my name wow. and the rest is history. Okay, great. And you know what? I think we have a few samples, so let's take a look.
Very nice. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. All the um, all the gals who sat and guys and gals that sat for me were guinea pigs in a way because I was <laughs> developing a new uh, way of seeing. And uh, one of the things I wanted to say was that. Um, there was a total uh, respect for the person sitting in front of me. And um, there was, I, I think it's very difficult for a person to sit in front of an artist and be looked at so scrutinized and painted, right. but everybody trusted the process. And, uh, where, and it came out that the person was so present in the painting, but there were things mm -hmm. within that, um, people aren't so used to being scrutinized when they're being painted and so it's kind of an uncomfortable situation yeah, so we have like, this what's that on your face right <laughs> but see that's the thing I that's not what I'm looking at and um, and they get kind of used to it once they get into it and relax and and it's an enjoyable process plus the product the end product is they see what's so interesting is they see things in the painting that they didn't know about themselves or they didn't see about themselves good bad and ugly you know and yet it's beautiful because the painting is a piece of them you know yeah. so it's been very interesting like, how that all evolved you know what i find right. interesting you were just at home this was just a hobby to you and you were just just painting without really thinking that you're going to have big contracts like Nordstrom's, right? Well, y yes. <laughs> but, so you're just, no, you're just, you know, just bringing no, you people never, over to your house and saying... It just, it, you know, there's a sense of um, uh, authenticity that has to go with what you do. And, and what do you mean by that? Sense I mean of that it's very difficult for, and yet so simple, for people f to find their true self and and how and where they're going and when you do things happen and you want to you just you just be the right time you know the synchronicities work the life works and you just don't think it's life's mystery so it's just your passion your love I mean, I'm thinking what keep kept you motivated all these years to just keep on right. painting I mean it's so hard to make a living as an artist yeah. well I never thought that way you know People told me that. People said, uh, oh my God, you're starving the streets. What are you going right. to do? How are you going to manage? But I didn't think about it because it was something that I knew I couldn't not do. You know, mm -hmm. and I tried all sorts of jobs, but I couldn't fit in. I just didn't fit in anywhere. Mm -hmm. And the only place that was really wonderful was behind the canvas or mm -hmm. creating. And, it, and when I couldn't paint, I created in the house. I mean, everybody, the, the, the idea, one of the things that was so interesting when I was doing the shows for Nordstrom was that people would come up to me and they had this ideal or glamorous idea of what it was to be an artist. And they think you sit behind your canvas in your <laughs> studio and la, 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 here's a painting. <laughs> That's still what I think. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and a lot of people were upset when I destroyed that image because it's an enormous amount of work, enormous amount of dedication, but there's a huge passion in it, you know, mm -hmm. and um, it's almost like you go to another world. So like uh, when I'm painting, I'm sometimes not even aware of my surroundings. So. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. You know, yeah, well, you know, um, I, I have a lot of thoughts about creativity in individuals. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all creative beings. Mm -hmm. It's just that everybody sort of generalizes that you're not a creative being unless you're mm -hmm. painting or making music or or um, you know in the theater and that is really so not true and then it took me to another area of conditional behavior you know and how we're all conditioned to think about things and why it's so difficult for people to get past their uh, fear of being creative mm -hmm. and so a lot of these paintings have to do with um, how I see people in that in that um, creative way of giving them um, some kind of feeling that they can and they won't, you know, when they see different parts of their bodies, you know, it has messages. Mm -hmm. And they pick it up and it changes them for some reason. I don't know. 
maybe an energetic color right. or uh, the way the person is lying on the or sitting up a certain way it has it reminds them of something and and uh, several people have started to do something else with their lives or thought deep, deeper about their lives by uh, having this experience with the painting mm -hmm. yeah I think you mentioned um, somebody um, like people have an emotional response to your work yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. On that note, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with more with Jeannie Collin Keys. So Jeannie, I understand you have a connection to Baltimore. Yes, uh, my daughter went to uh, Maryland Institute of Art for four years. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Yes, yeah, she had an incredible experience there. And she's a sculptor and uh, has gone on to Ohio University for her master's. Mm -hmm. My son is also an artist. Wow, He's a, two, oh. two artists? Well, he was, a, wow. he was a business major. and fought his artistic genes <laughs> for quite a while, but uh, he finally gave, it, gave in, <laughs> and uh, so he's, he's, all, he's an oil painter, mm -hmm. wow. and so we have a really good time when we get together, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but we're all in different, we're all doing di very different things, and uh, a lot of the reasons I think my children became creative is because well, not became as a creative, mom, right? but <laughs> as, a, as a mom, um, there, everything was open to them. You know, there were no limits. They could paint when they wanted to. Mm -hmm. They had access. They had a person who was doing it in front of them and, and right. you know, and invited them in to explore. And I think it's a really important lesson for parents, you know, with their children to um, expose them as much as they can to uh, anything creative, sure. you know, with yeah. no limits. Using that other side of the brain. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> it's very, very important. Mm -hmm. So what's next for you? I mean, you mentioned the watercolors at Nordstrom. So what are you doing now? Well, I'm doing these oil paintings, and I'm doing some commercial work for a company out in the Midwest. Uh, it's very different, and it's I have to switch off for, from doing these paintings because these are very dear, more mm -hmm. closer to my heart than... The commercial work is uh, sort of like out there, a little more plastic. So when you mean that it's different, is it different to paint? Is it different to paint with watercolors versus oil colors, or is Very, just different? It's industry? night and day. Yeah. It's reverse thinking. Uh huh. And uh, it's you, also yeah. What do you mean by reverse thinking? Well, with uh, watercolor, you go from. Uh, light to dark mm -hmm. and you from kind of blend oil, them together right you go from dark to light so you have when you see something you have to visualize the build up mm -hmm. or the build down you know like that wow so it was completely different plus the application of the paint how to use the brush there's you know in anything whether it's a doctor or a lawyer or whatever when you get your tools and you want to learn something you have to learn your tools first. Mm -hmm. when, when that becomes part of your body and part of your process of thinking, mm -hmm. then the creativity can come in because you're no longer thinking about the brush and the paint. You're thinking about what you're looking at. What you're going to create. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, I took a class in sculpture um, this summer at Ohio University and was totally out of my comfort really? zone. <laughs> now it's and your daughter the, who does sculpture, yes, right? Yes, I went and took it with her and I uh, thought I was going to jump out the window <laughs> after the first week because they were all 20-year-old students who were um, sculpture majors uh -huh. and here I am, a painter, and I've never sculpted. And so it was really challenging. Uh -huh. But what ended up happening was while I was there, I recognized that I knew nothing, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. I was a new set of tools. Well, yeah. yeah well, you got to throw it all out, mm -hmm. you know. And so I and and I was struggling with that. And but I, I sat down on a Friday morning at the table on the studio, and I said, you know what, guys, I know nothing, and wow. 
yet I know everything. So somewhere in between that, I got to create something, and that's when it started to happen. It's because I was able to put all that down, and it turned out really much more fun. Okay, great. And we'll be right back with more of Jeannie Collin Keys after this quick break, so stay tuned. We'll touch that down. Keys, who's a great artist and a dear personal friend of mine. So Jeannie, if somebody's interested in uh, commissioning you to do a painting, oil or watercolor or sculpture, how would they get in touch with you? I have a website. Um, the website is www.jeanniecollinkeys.com. Right now it's down because I'm making a lot of changes, but it'll be up shortly and there's an email address on it that you can get in touch with me. So we were talking about creativity, right? Yes. And everybody has some sort of creativity in, in them, right? Everybody. Everybody does. You know, I have an interesting experience. Can I share it with you? Please. You know, I've never been into art. I really just, never been into making art myself. I've always appreciated art, but never was into making art myself. And one of my friends took me over to um, the, with the art museum in in D.C., what's it? The Modern Art Museum in D.C. What's the what's the big art museum over there, right? Hershorn. Yeah, I think that's it. And they had this section on modern art, and we went in there, and um, I'm like, anybody can do this. Some of the modern art, you know, the one I'm talking about, where you just kind of like put painting on the on mm -hmm. canvases. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, I went out there and I bought some canvases, and I started doing this because my friend yeah. says, you, not yeah. nobody, not everybody can do that. I said, sure. Let me go ahead and do that. I bought some canvases, got some paint, started doing that. A few glasses of wine a later. A few glasses of wine <laughs> helped me out with the art, but it's amazing. Okay. It was amazing when you start going ahead and really playing with the canvases, mm -hmm. you know, having a, having a great time. It is. So it, it is. And you, you sort of go into another world, yeah. kind of, which is a nice place to be. It yeah. definitely it's, is. And uh, several of my friends who've watched me paint, Said that I'm a very different person when I'm behind my easel than when I'm not. Oh wow! And I asked him at one time. I said, "Cause it's it is. It's kind of like a writer will tell you they go into the zone, uh -huh. or I'm sure anyone who does that. Uh -huh. And I go into a zone that um, I'm conscious, but it's the it's it's like a beautiful place. Uh -huh. <laughs> it is. It's Without great. a glass of wine. <laughs> so. Um, that's that's true that's true and and it's fun and you know you just push yourself and um, there was the, the the problem with a lot of commercial work and that's why I kind of try to stay away from it is that it keeps you in the same place mm -hmm. and when you want to change an artist needs to grow and change mm -hmm. constantly challenging themselves to change and when you have success like I did with Nordstrom for so many years in a in a genre kind of painting, it's very difficult to pull yourself out of that financially mm -hmm. as well and start over. And basically, for the past five years, that's what I did. I started over. Wow. So. So did you go to school for watercolors and oil paintings? As well as I was sculpture? an art education major. I didn't study particular. Uh -huh. I, I'm basically self-taught. Wow. wow. That's yeah. <laughs> so. so, you know, we have a museum here, the um, American Visionary Art Museum, and mm -hmm. your work could go there because you're completely self-taught. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. well, that yeah. would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> that would be I've, I've got a lot of pieces for a show. I think 
probably in the next year I'll have enough pieces really um, to start looking to do a show somewhere. So I'll keep everybody posted. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> so what do you like best? Do you like um, using your hands in sculpture or do you like the watercolor or the oils? Wow. Well, I love the oils. Mm -hmm. The watercolors, I'm, I'm not doing at all. I have no desire to, so I just kind of listen to that. But I really like the sculpture. Mm -hmm. I like. I'm. I was born in the country, so I like getting my hands dirty and, you know, mm -hmm. playing with the mud. <laughs> 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 but there's so much more to it too. There's a uh, being able to see differently. Uh, three-dimensional work as opposed to two-dimensional mm -hmm. but it did have it it did affect my painting Wow! so so I'll have to come visit you when you have like clay in your hair <laughs> yes. covered in paint and everything yes, mm -hmm. and my grungy overalls all right great <laughs> well Jeannie any last words for our audience just go and do it <laughs> release, release that creative side release that creative side and Jeannie, I understand you brought a few samples of your work. Yes, I did. Okay. okay. Yeah, let's take a look. Can I have that? Wow. Wow, this is nice. Tell, tell us about this piece. Yeah. This, uh, this is a gal I've known for a long time, and uh, that's just how I saw her. She's very serene and peaceful, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> she's got uh, a lot of soft energy. So. Um, that's how I saw her, and I painted her that way. She wow. she related to it very well. Wow. How long does it take you to paint something like this? Um, it varies. Um, two p two. I need two sittings for two afternoons, and then I work on it off and on mm -hmm. after they leave. Okay. So. All right, great. Wow. Yeah. Let's see the other one. We have this other one over here. What's the title of this one? Well, we call her Sleeping Beauty. Mm -hmm. um, she's a young gal and uh, a very good friend of mine. And uh, she's, uh, it can be interpreted in many ways. I don't go into the interpretation. I just visually see her that way. Mm -hmm. And so um, if she wants to figure out what is more to that painting or what feels right to her. She needs to go to talk to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they're beautiful. That, that, is, that is great. That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Jeannie, thank you so much for bringing those yeah, two thank pieces. You. That was great. You're welcome. It's beautiful. Thank you. Well, that's another episode of Top of the Morning. And Jeannie, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah. You're welcome. It's been wonderful. It's been I great enjoyed to it. see thank you. Thank you so great much for coming you. on the show. Thank great. you. Thanks. Okay, and we'll see you next time.